one day each and every one of you will stand naked before a holy God and you will be judged. Life and death, heaven and hell. Some of you will hear my voice and go to heaven when you die and others of you will hear warning after warning after warning and you will not listen and you will die under the wrath of God and spend eternity in hell. Young people, listen to me. And you need to be very, very careful. This Christianity is not a cultural thing. This Christianity is, is not something that just should be a small part of your life. It is not something that you do on Sunday. Christianity is not about you living in the world six days a week and coming to church. Christianity is not about you being just like the world all the time and then coming to church on Sunday. If that is your Christianity, you have no Christianity. You are not Christian. Young people, let me ask you a question. How do you know that you're Christian? How do you know that you have truly come to know Christ? How do you know that if you died right now, you would go to heaven and be accepted by God Almighty before his throne? How do you know? You say, well, it's all of grace. Yes, it is all of grace. We are not saved by works. We are saved by grace. We are saved by believing the promises of the gospel. That is true. But what you need to understand is grace is a powerful thing that he who has given you grace to repent and believe gives you grace to continue repenting and to continue believing. He who gives you grace to believe unto justification also will give you grace for your sanctification. That you might grow in holiness. As a matter of fact, listen to me. One of the greatest evidences that you have truly believed in Christ unto salvation is that God has begun a good work of sanctification in you. He works and works and works to make you holy. Now, let me ask you, is that a reality in your life? But can you honestly tell me that your great desire is to be holy? Can you honestly tell me that your great desire is not to be like the world, to not be like what you see here in the West and many other places, but to be like Jesus Christ? Can you tell me that? Because if you cannot, you should be afraid. You should be very afraid. Those who love the world do not have the love of the Father. God's motive for saving people is not found in that people. The Bible says that all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. When the holy God looks at sinful men, the only thing their sin motivates God to do is judge them, to condemn them. So if God is going to save men, it is not because of men. It is in spite of men. God does not save us because we deserve to be saved. God saves us because he is a savior. God does not love us because we deserve to be loved. We do not deserve the love of God. We deserve his wrath. God saves us because he himself is love. When a church lowers the standard of the gospel in order to get more people to come in, when a church does not preach on holiness and what it means to be truly converted, then Christianity in the church fills up with a lot of ungodly people and because of their actions, the unbelieving world blasphemes the name of God. But what we need to understand is that the people who claim to know Christ and yet live in a way that contradicts the word of Christ and the character of Christ, they are not Christian. We are saved by faith alone. We are not saved by works. But what you need to understand is that a person who has been truly saved has been born again. They have become a new creature. God has done a tremendous work in them to demonstrate his power. He has made them into new creatures with new affections, new desires to serve Christ and to be holy. Has he done that to you? Let me ask you a question. Do you look at the world and long to be like the world, act like the world, talk like the world, dress like the world, have the world's respect and the world's esteem? If you're that way, you ought to be terrified because that just could be evidence that God has not done a work in you. If God's power 
cannot be seen in your life leading you to greater and greater holiness, then maybe there is no power of God in your life. That he has not regenerated your heart. You are not born again. You are not a Christian because he says, I am going to save people. Why? To demonstrate to the world how powerful I am, not only in saving their souls, but in transforming their lives. Is God transforming your life? Christians are not sinless. Christians are not perfect. Christians will struggle with sin and Christians can even fall. But in the midst of that weakness, it will be evident that God is working. God is teaching. God is disciplining and God is bringing them to greater and greater heights of Christian maturity and holiness. Is that you? Since you professed faith in Christ, are your desires for Christ growing? Are your desires for holiness growing? Is God's power in transforming your life evident? Are you becoming less and less like the world and more and more like Christ? Or are you becoming more and more like the world? When God truly saves a person, what does he do? He begins to work in them. With what purpose? To pull them out of the world, to pull them out of worldliness, to pull them out of sin and to bring them to himself. Now, let me ask you a question. Is that obvious in your life? Do you see God working in your life to get more and more of the world out of you? And is God drawing you more and more to himself and conformity to his image? If you have truly believed in Christ unto salvation, then God will be working in you to make you holy. If there is no evidence that God is working in you to make you holy, there is a good chance that you have not truly been converted. When God saves a person, he is cutting them off from what? From the world. What is the world? Everything in, on this planet, every idea, every thought, every word, every action that contradicts God's will and God's nature. Everything on this earth that opposes God. When God truly saves a person, he cuts them off from that and he begins to separate them little by little, changing their life, getting the worldliness out of their life and drawing them unto himself. Holiness means to be separated from the world. Christian, one of the purposes of the scriptures is to teach us what God hates so that we will run away from it. Make no mistake, there can be no friendship with God and the world. And between the believer, there can be no friendship between the believer and the world. If God is truly working in you, he is going to use his word and the power of his spirit to do what? To reveal to you what is wrong in this world and to draw you away from it. If you want God, you're going to have to let go of the world. And if you do not want to let go of the world because you love the world, then know this, the love of the father is not in you. I know how deadly my culture is. You live in a land full of all kinds of things that glitter, but they're not gold. You live in a land full of all kinds of promises that are lies. You live in a land that will do everything in its power to turn you away from Christ. But you live in a land that tells you you can have God and the world too. You live in a land that tells you you can love the world and love Christ. And I want you to know it is a lie. It is a lie. Do not think I'm trying to be angry. Do not think I'm trying to have a mean spirit. I am saying this to save you from the monster that has killed more people than any political tyrant that has ever ruled this land, this planet. If you love the world, be afraid because that could just be an evidence. God has never worked in you. You have never believed unto salvation. You have never truly been converted because if he truly saves you, he who began a good work in you will finish it. Remember, 
God saves people to demonstrate how powerful he is. And so if he begins a work in you, he will finish it. I want you to know that if God has brought you from the condemnation of sin, if he has truly saved you, if he has truly justified you, then the evidence of that is he will continue working in you to transform you. Why? Because every Christian is a demonstration of God's power. He is going to finish the work he has begun because his reputation depends upon it. Can you say, can you prove that since the moment of your conversion, there is evidence that God is working in your life to make you holy. Can you see that? Can you tell me that you are truly a Christian? Because when you look at the world and it maybe deceives you and draws you to it, that God comes and disciplines you. That when you participate in sin, you can't stand it because the Holy Spirit is so convicting you. Or can you simply call yourself Christian and yet look like the world, act like the world, talk like the world, dress like the world, do everything the world does. One of the things that the Lord will do when he has truly saved a person is again, he will begin to do a work of cleansing them. The moment we believe in Jesus Christ, we are justified and we are right with God through faith. But if we have truly believed, God is going to begin to do a lifetime work of sanctification in us of changing us, of cleansing us from all our filthiness and from all our idols. And I want you to know something. He can do it. He is sovereign over the believer and he can work in that believer's life to make that believer clean. One of the evidences, young people, that you truly belong to God, that he truly is your father, is that he is involved in your life to make you clean. If you have truly been converted, God has a claim on you. You belong to him. He is going to change you for his own glory and he is going to change you because he loves you. He is not going to let you stay the way that you were. And he has the power to change you. If you can live in sin, live in the world with all your worldly friends doing all your worldly things and you can get away with it and there's no conviction of the spirit, there's no discipline from God, it is evidence that you are an illegitimate child. You are not truly a child of God. If you love the sensuality of the world and you love all its boasting, its pride of the eyes and its, its boasting in the flesh and all the things that glitters in this world and you can participate in it without the discipline of the Father, it is because the Father is not your Father. The goal of God in your life is not prosperity, it's not health, it's not wealth, and it's most certainly not your best life now. God's goal, if you belong to him as a child, is to make you holy, to conform you to the image of Christ. He will cleanse you from your filthiness. He will cleanse you from your idols. And he will be very zealous in doing that. He will do anything that is necessary to make you conform to the image of his son. Is he doing that in your life? The evidence that you are truly converted is not that one time in your life you prayed a prayer and asked Jesus to come in. The evidence that you are converted is that one time in your life you repented of your sins and you continue repenting today. The evidence that you're saved is one time you believed unto salvation and you continue believing today. The evidence that you're converted is that one time God began a good work in you and he continues working in you today, changing your life, transforming you by his power. My dear friend, when the Apostle Paul says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, have you become a new creature? Have you? When you fall into sin, does it break your heart and afflict you? Or do you love it? Do you relish it? We were born and by nature, we were sinners. We did not want the good food of God. We would rather have the sin and the disgrace, the debauchery of this world. We ran to it, we fed on it, we ate it, we loved it, we desired it. 
But when a person is converted, what does God do? He changes them into a new creation, a new heart recreated in the image of God and true righteousness and true holiness. And with that new heart, they have new desires and they can no longer stomach the sin of this world. And they're ashamed that they ever participated in it. And they begin to walk no longer as a sinner, but begin to learn to walk as a saint. Is this you? Has God changed your heart? Does he continue changing your heart? Do you long to be free from the filth of this world? Do you long to be like Christ? If you can say yes, that is a great evidence that you have been born again.